10 out of 10 for all the effort to be made to describe to us what on earth spatial computing is. Thank you. Yeah, no, I uh, had the opportunity to put on the, it's not a headset, it's a spatial computing device <laughs> and get a private demo. And I would tell you, it impresses. It is, it's like nothing I've ever tried before. And I've tried on a lot of headsets Yeah. from the, uh, the setup is easy, the interface is very intuitive than for most devices, and then when you think about almost 180 degrees field of view, it's, you can't imagine it. So at three and a half thousand dollars, do you feel that that's the right price tag? They're going for, you know, a luxury item before they go for complete compute power in everyone's hands? Yeah, so I think that often that is the Apple strategy, and I think one of the other advantages of not calling it a headset is an uh, Apple computer costs anywhere from about eight or $900 up to 7000 So this is a mid-range <laughs> computing device, spatial computing device for Apple. It's not an expensive headset. Julie, I'm sorry, I've got to go back to this. The one question that everyone has. I was at Apple WWDC as well. What is spatial computing? Yeah, it's 3D. So I'll get, let me give you a few examples of what that means. So in one example, I was what appeared to be on the top of a cliff above a fjord in Norway, and I was able to peer over. I was also able to sit at the edge of a lake and listen to the lapping water on the shore while reading a book. I was, uh, a butterfly came at one point and landed on my finger, and a dinosaur gobbled my hand. So those are a few examples. But the other exciting thing about this new device is that it can take photos and it can take videos. So I watched children. Uh, having a birthday party and to allow consumers to create those kind of videos on their own we haven't seen something like this in a very long time what, what jumped out at me when i got up close and personal with the vision pro was was the appendage the battery pack mm -hmm. and the gray cable running from it what did you make of that well it's so a couple things so one you know the concern with a device like this that we're not calling a headset is always the weight of the device. So everyone's looking for ways to take any kind of weight or size out of it. So as it is now, the device is about one pound and so that's on the head. And then the battery pack is about the size maybe of an iPhone or an iPhone Pro and it sits to the side. Uh, the battery life is two hours, I believe. And I've heard some folks knock that, but on the other hand, you're un also unlikely to have this device on your head for more than you know one to two hours. And so I, I think they've engineered that just about right that it's, uh, the battery pack's gonna last longer than I'm likely to have this on my head for one session. You know, at Caro, being at Apple Park, paying close attention to the, the keynote, the presentation, there was a lot of emphasis on, on the, the idea that the Vision Pro can do lots of things that are accessible on the iPad and iOS. That, that all that great stuff, it's ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, and given the price point, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I think it's a very smart strategy because if you look at the VR headset market today, it's primarily gaming, it's education, it is a little bit of fitness, and then uh, Meta is hopeful for some social media. If you look at the strategy that Apple is taking with their device, it's tapping into media consumption, which is e far, far easier for consumers to get up and get running and get going and have enjoyment from the device. And it also taps into the Apple One services that so many of their customers are already buying. If you think about it, typical Apple smartphone owner, more than 90% of them also own an Apple computer, more than half of them own a tablet, a third of them own an Apple Watch or a, one of the smart speakers. And so Apple, I don't know if you want to call them enthusiasts, people who own Apple products tend to own the many products within the ecosystem. Yeah. And so when they use something like the Apple One services, they get the benefit of using those devices, you know, that service across all of the devices they own. So very easy, quick startup and very easy, fast utility yeah. and value to the consumers what this device will deliver.